In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good, master of life, come dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we're going to finish the first letter of John. We have two sections. One is the conclusion of the dogmatic part, and then there is the final uh, exhortation and warning about sin. So we start with verse 9. If you remember, last time we spoke about the three who bear witness, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are of one accord, the Spirit who leads us to the baptism of Jesus and then our participation in that, which is an orientation to the Passion. Since he has already completed that, when we're baptized, we're baptized into his death, as Paul says. And we receive death to sin and life to God, as Paul puts it, you see. And so now uh, we're going on with this notion of witness which is very important in these latter lines of the first letter. If we accept the witness of human beings, the witness of God is greater. And this is, the, if we accept this, the, the uh, testimony, the witness, the martyria of men, the martyria, martyria of God is greater. And this is the witness of God. For he has borne witness concerning his son. Now this is difficult to understand. How does he witness concerning his son? Well, all that Jesus did, as John tells us, is the work of the Father in him. And he says so. The works I do, the Father does in me. The things I see, the Father say, the Father speaks in me. Um, so, it is the Father witnessing, you see, God, God means the Father. Uh, he has borne witness concerning his Son. When we gaze on Jesus, we are witnessing, we are accepting the witness of God the Father. The one who puts his faith in the Son of God has the witness in himself. St. Thomas says, you know you believe when you experience yourself believing. It's a very powerful line, but it's in, it's in the Summa. You know you believe when you experience yourself believing, because that's the movement of the Holy Spirit in you. Now, it doesn't always have to be an overwhelming experience, but when you can say, really meaning it, I believe that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. I believe that by his death and resurrection, he has set all of us free and invited us to eternal life. When I can say those things, and I experience myself believing, you see, then I know I have faith. Uh, and so, uh, the one who puts his faith in the Son of God has the witness in himself that he knows that he's okay, believing. The one who does not believe God makes him a liar because he has not put his faith in the witness which God has borne concerning his son. Now, he's going to give us a surprising dimension of this witness, but before we go there, the whole life of Jesus is the Father's witness to his son. 
as, as I've already quoted, John often speaks about the works I do, the Father is doing in me. It's the Father bearing witness to his Son through the works that Jesus does. The ones recorded for us in the Gospel, the ones he works in our own heart. Uh, you see? Um, and this is the witness, you see. God gave us eternal life, and this very life is in his Son. So there is an experiential dimension of faith which grows as faith grows, but the uh, criteria or the receptor of that experience is different. It's not a sensible or an emotional uh, witness. Finally, when the process of bringing us through to a uh, maturing, a mature faith, you see, is when we experience ourselves believing, not only once in a while. You see, the whole role of that final purification, which John of the Cross calls dark night of the soul, you see, is to have us know who Jesus Christ is. Now it's faith, not like knowing that water expands at four degrees centigrade, uh, but it's knowing. Faith is a way of knowing. So this knowing in its full maturity happens to us after our whole spirit has been purified by the fire of divine love. What the, the uh, great saints and mystics tell us is the, the night of the senses and then even the night of the soul. Uh, now, he is laying down the principle of that here, you see, to the degree that uh, we know this witness, to that degree, you see, uh, the one who puts his faith in the Son of God has the witness in himself. To the degree that we have our faith in the Son of God, to that degree we have the witness in ourselves. But that's an ongoing process. Our whole life is meant to be going through that process. The saints tell us about this process. Um, and it's traced out for us in an admirable way in the writings of St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa. It's elsewhere also. For instance, Gregory of Nyssa's Life of Moses traces out the uh, growth in the life to the journey in the project to the Promised Land. There are other ways of describing this, but it is this witness um, and that lovely text I've already quoted twice. We know we believe when we experience ourselves believing. Well, do I experience myself believing? Yes. Did um, Mother Teresa experience herself believing? Yes. Are they the same? No. I have a small part of that. She has a big part of that. But it's the same reality that has to grow. And that's what uh, John is telling us here, you see. Uh, and this is the witness. God gave us eternal life. That's the witness. To know that. And again, we can know it a little bit. We can know it in a totally transforming way. And all oh, my friends, if we will only listen to the Holy Spirit and stop wasting his time, yield. Yes, Put ourselves to trouble. Have a real prayer time. Obey Him. Accept the trials of life. Let the Holy Spirit purify us, you see. The one who has the Son has life. And the one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It's as simple as that. Well then, how do I know? 
if I have the son the the Son of God reflection am I obeying God am I living an upright life am I at peace then at least I have begun the journey toward God now let him finish that journey let him bring me to a real purification now is everybody called to that yes I believe so some of us will complete that purification in purgatory. That's why it's called purgation, purgatory. Some who are generous with God will complete it here. And they'll go from here right to God. And that's uh, what this text is talking about. Uh, you see? So this is this witness, this martyria. You see? Uh, if we accept the witness of human beings, the witness of God is greater. And this is the witness of God that he has borne concerning his son. The witness of everything he told us about in the letter. The one who puts his faith in the Son of God has the witness in himself. Which, to quote once again, is what Thomas says. You know you believe when you experience yourself believing. But it's a, it's a work of God in us to which we are yielding and we know that the Lord is working this. Now, when we say it, say the creed and go to Mass on Sunday, the elementary aspect of it is present. The elements, if you were, are present. But this letter is calling us to grow. For the good of our own life, here and hereafter, for the good close to us, for the building of the church, and for making the church the preacher of the gospel and making yourself credible. Credible. Because if we're credible, people will believe not us, but God. And that's how we preach the gospel. And uh, certain people preach the gospel by being. They're not always talking. You know? Uh, St. Francis is recorded to have said, preach the gospel with your life uh, and use words when they're necessary. Uh, that's the fruit of this witness, you see. And the one who has the Son has life. The one who has the Son has life. That's a promise, you see. And it's with that line that in a way... The, uh, the bulk of the letter ends. And now we move on to uh, have some warnings and some final instructions. And that will conclude uh, the letter. And so, let us just remember, if you have the Son, you have life. Amen.